Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Ascension and Astrology Show. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, your host and Ascension Guide. And I'm with my beautiful co-host today, Janet Hickox, astrologer, world-renowned astrologer. And my beautiful friends, my guests back on the show again today, Pia Orlean and Cullen Baird-Smith are Palladian influencers. They are all things Palladian, creating calendars, writing books, and they are here to assist us with grounding in new ways of living that are um, that help us simplify our lives. And so welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you. We love, we love spending time with both of you. It's, it's always an uplifting and deeply, deeply moving time together. It just feels like we fit together really nicely. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree with that very much. Yes. Yes. So we, we have a wonderful show uh, planned today for our audience about, again, we've talked about this before, and I'm going to include links just so you know, if you haven't watched the last two interviews that I did and Janet too, that we did with Pia and Colin, I'm going to include those links below because those interviews were fabulous and there was a yeah. lot of good information of giving you a little background history of what Pia and Cullen do, and also their work with uh, Larkma and the Palladian energy. And so today we want to talk about what, what this, the topic is about today is Western astrology can help us identify um, things, you know, challenging aspects and help us identify uh, who we are, but it doesn't help us, um, you know, to make make things more simple and I am an astrology lover I use astrology all the time and so anything that we can do to simplify a more organic way and use the new systems that are available to us that's what the conversation about is today right Pia absolutely yes the more we do to simplify our lives and be in harmony with flow the better it is yeah I agree yeah right <laughs> So tell us a little bit about more, you know, with Western astrology, you know, it can diagnose who we are and then tell us more about the Palladian earth energy, how that supports us to put us back in charge of our lives. Lovely question. Thank you. I will start by saying I was, I do Palladian earth energy charts for people, astrological charts, and I do consultations with them. And I was just amazed today that my consultation I had was around someone who said, you know, I'm really troubled because Western astrology just pinpoints me and tells me who I am and it can get it pretty exact, but it never tells me how I can take back my own life, how, what I can do about it. And I thought that's very synchronistic since we're talking about this right now. The main thing that I see is that in the system of the Pleiadian Earth Energy Astrology, each Earth Energy has a high road and a low road. So we don't have something pinpointing saying you're this and it's in detriment or you're this and it's exalted. Instead, we have an energy that says, this is an energy that can express like this or can express like this. And each one of us has one of those particular earth energies. There's 20 of them. It's, it's always our choice to decide, do we want to take the higher vibrational road? Do we want to think about unity consciousness or do we want to think about the highest good for all in understanding each one of these choices? Or we could also take the lower road with a lower vibratory understanding and not come from a higher point of view, which would seem a little bit selfish when we realize that we can actually change our vibration through our choices, which ripples out and affects everyone else in all other relationships. So what Pia just said has a multi-level understanding of how we can use this system. The other thing that's really brilliant about this is it's not just looking at the personality of each person. It's also looking at the personality of each day. Because these 20 earth energies that define us as people also define the personality of every day. And so on a certain day, 
we can also look at the high road and the low road of what the energies are presenting and make clear choices to put us back in control of how we're going to respond rather than simply reacting because we think the day's in detriment, not doing what we want. <laughs> it's why I, I really don't use detriment and uh, uh, that, in, that type of thing in my readings with people because I just don't really want to set them up for either a failure or even a success. I mean, there's this path and journey that they're on. And, you know, to be able to tell them that there are two different ways or expressions gives them the choice instead of me telling them, oh, yeah, you're going to be this way. Um, and then they don't feel like they have a choice. So for me, it's why I've always searched out other types of astrology as opposed mm -hmm. to just sticking with Western. I, I, I went to Mayan astrology because it did give us something different. It gave us something more simple, but yet more profound mm -hmm. and also human design astrology. So I think there's something, it's like when you think about the Bible or the, the other sacred texts, there's little truths in each one of them, but no one of them has the exact whole truth. So Absolutely. I feel like sometimes I'm stitching together stories from the different types of astrologies. That's, that's exactly how we've led our lives. Instead of taking a certain doctrine or a certain dogma as the absolute truth, we have done exactly what you've just described. We've picked elements from many different disciplines, pulled them all together, and made a better whole, made a more balanced whole. And we think that is, is probably not, I won't say the best way to live, but it's one of the best ways to have a more harmonious understanding of the big picture. So we agree with you totally about that concept. It's you know, also, I, no, go ahead, Cornelia. Well, I was going to say what that reminds me of what you just said, Colin, <laughs> is how, how you, you took elements from so many different so many different things instead of it having to be about one thing right mm -hmm. you, you took so many you know things that resonated and that 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 speak as truth that speak as truth and to put them together in in one organic whole if you will and that is the same as not just not one person alone doesn't have all the answers Right. Not one person alone doesn't. It's not one system. It's not one. It's it's all. It's all. And there's there's goodness and there's truth that comes out of the all into the whole. That that is precisely our understanding of duality and unity. You're talking about bringing the differences of all of us together that that we have in duality. We all experience it every day. But taking all of those experiences and mixing them together to bring about a unity is exactly how we can all live our lives in a much, much smoother, much more harmonious way. That, that's a fantastic concept. I like, that. I like that idea of creating a tapestry almost. Like there's, <clears throat> there's so much more to the story than if I just took, you know, one picture and, you know, put it you know, on a screen or something like that. If you have a tapestry, it's made up of all the little pieces and no one piece is more important than the other. But, but if you didn't have that one little piece, you wouldn't have the whole. So I, I like that idea. Um, but what I would really love to know more about is how is it that uh, Pleiadian earth energy astrology um, can really help us to live our lives more holy and more simple? I think there's two answers to that. And one of them is becoming familiar with the energy that you carry and then learning a little bit about each of the other energies that present in people around you or on days of the week, just understanding the energy and accepting the concept that in duality, there is always a choice between automatic reaction, which is generally the lower vibratory response and higher vibratory response of I'm responding to this energy and I'm making a more conscious choice for the highest good of all. That's something that astrology really doesn't typically, in my experience, go into in the way that we can do it here. I have a listing here of each of the 20 energies that we could just pick one or two as an example and say, what is the high expression of this energy and what is the lower expression of this energy? 
there's also expressions of it in the calendar at the back that we've talked about before, yes. where it shows appropriate use of energy, inappropriate response to the energy. So there are many ways that we can learn how to use this dualistic experience instead of just saying, oh, my Saturn's doing something or other. We can say, oh, well, my listening energy is right here with me today, and how am I going to respond to that? Am I going to do this or am I going to do this? So that way it always becomes a choice moment by moment, and it keeps us more in the present moment rather than trying to think about when we were in a bad situation or projecting to when we're going to be in a better situation. It keeps us right here, right now. It, it allows us to not be trapped in time mm -hmm. backwards, presently or forward, it allows us to simply work with the energies that are available in that moment, whether that moment is, is with another person, with an organization, or the day itself. It gives us the opportunity to make those choices. And I know we've used the word choice a lot today. It's so important. <laughs> it, 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 thank you. It is, because <laughs> if we simply look at the position of the stars, and we, we look at what is showing up, that's more about time than it is about energy specifically. So yeah. in, this, in this system, we can utilize the available energies to either look at what's going on, change what's going on, or live into what's going on instead of just saying, well, this is going to be a bad day because this, this star tells us this or, or this conjunction tells us that. We can bypass that in some ways, not totally. We can't step away from the movement of heavenly bodies. They are there and they do affect us. We can't say that that's not important because it is. But alongside that, we can also use the wisdom and the knowledge of energy to make those little tiny incremental changes that change everything around us. And I mean everything around us. Yeah, I think of Western astrology sort of as timekeeping. It, it, it's, it's mechanical in nature almost because we're talking about the relationship angularly between planets. And, you know, for example, yesterday, Mercury conjunct Uranus, and that means this specific sort of thing. And, and these are the things you might experience, but it really doesn't give you, it, it does, it can give you, but you'd have to go really deep in that to try to, to, to get out what it is energetically. So, and, and you do that with an astrologer. Most people will just pick up the newspaper or, you know, they'll look online and find out what the energy of the day is. But are they really getting that? I mean, it's not really what they're getting. Now, I was looking at the calendar this morning, and it was, today is a seven devoting. Devoting, yeah. And so maybe you could tell us what that would mean a little bit. And then, you know, for me personally, I'm a two remembering. How, how, how then do I translate the day to my personal mm -hmm. path? That's, this is a great question. That's a great question. But before we go into that question, I just want to say one last thing on, on, on what we were just talking about with the, um, the choosing part again, and that we as awakened beings are always in the position to not be victims. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the, that's what I wanted to say is that we are not victims at any point in time ever to whatever it is that we are, you know, whatever the challenge may be, and that we have uh, the power in the present moment to always choose the higher path, even when there is a square to Pluto or <laughs> when there is a major challenge going on or whatever, then like, like I heard you say earlier, Pia, is it's not because of Saturn. Don't put the blame on the planet, if you will. Take what the challenge is, because there's, an, there's a challenge that's happening. And those planets, they live inside our physical bodies, I feel. Yes, that's, my, that's my thinking, is that you know when there's a square or something going on, it's happening inside my physical body. And now I get to release powerlessness 
in the challenge through the experience that I'm having and I get to release that and then I get to look at the calendar and uh, choose, look at the energy and it says devoting. So now what am I devoted to? I, I feel. Ooh, good question. What am I devoted to, you know? And I, I know the big picture. I know I'm devoted to love. I'm devoted to the ascension on the planet. I'm devoted to compassion. I'm devoted to the higher path. That is the true higher vibrational use of the energy devoting. And the problem that so many people have with devoting energy is they've been trained into believing they have to be de devoted to certain religions, certain families, certain concepts and ideas that may have been okay when they made the choice, but is no longer okay with where they are now. And if they continue to be loyal and devoted to things that were appropriate some time ago, but it's not in the present moment, they're going to feel very stuck. Yeah. So, and, you, and you know what I love about this? Because it is so simple. Because even if it's just the word, anyone can take the word devotion without having to read a whole bunch of text about anything. You can just take that word and ask your inner self, what does devoted, what are you devoted to? Or what does devotion mean to you? And then, and then act, act on that. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's very direct. When, when we use the word simple, we really mean simple because we, we can go directly to whether, whether that's a mental understanding or a feeling state, we can position ourselves immediately right there and be connected to that idea right now we don't as you said a moment ago we don't have to look at text we don't have to pick up a book or two and try to understand well what does this mean how am i going to apply this we can personally do exactly what you just mentioned we can simply move with it as it makes sense to us personally and for those who want to take it to a little bit deeper level who really want to work with this the Pleiadians have shared with us that the highest thing you can be devoted to is the devoted devotion to truth. Because when you're devoted to truth, you are devoted to love. It's right there together. Both of them are right there together. So people who are feeling stuck may need to stop and look at what they're believing. What is their belief system showing them about what they need to be devoted to, as opposed to what their heart is telling them, this is where my calling is, this is what I'm really devoted to. I mean, at the higher vibratory level, you just expressed it all. I'm, I'm devoted to love. I'm devoted to the ascension. You mentioned all the things that the higher vibrational response presents when you're loyal to the truth, when you're devoted to the truth. When you are clouded with belief systems and overlays of society and, oh, I'm supposed to do this and I should do that, what your heart's telling you just kind of takes a back seat. And that's when you start feeling stuck because you're not devoted to what your heart tells you is true. And you're not devoting to your own higher ideals. You're being devoted to something probably somebody else has told you you need to be devoted and loyal to. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Isn't that, it just makes it so easy. Just like when I feel into what you just said, that this is really, this is, this is our path. This is the way what a wonderful way that we're we're co-creating and building the new earth and and so grateful that we have this higher level of consciousness that now we get to live out and act out and move into harmony with the earth and each other and it's just such a wonderful time to be alive it's such a wonderful time to to be here on this planet i mean when we look back at the abuse and the the um, trauma and the devastation of how we've continued on over the last thousands and thousands of years um, destroying this planet destroying each other uh, not not living according to uh the universal principles divine truth love harmony and how now in in this in this feminine era of this feminine lead, the divine feminine energies, the feminine in all of us, the, the, the mother in all of us that is, is full of love and compassion and restoring this order on earth today. And, you know, part of my, um, I wanted to say too, is my podcast, Heaven on Earth, that I have been um, 
um, where I'm featuring many high vibrational pe people that are coming on that are influencers on, on this planet uh, is, is every Friday at 12 noon Pacific time. And so for those of you that are not familiar with that podcast, you can follow us there because we're anchoring in that heaven on earth energy. All of us that are here doing this, um, that are, you know, doing this work and that are facilitating this because this is, this is why we came. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the important work. It's what we are here to do, and joyfully. It, and, and this time in, in our human history is probably the most important time to be doing exactly what you are suggesting right now, because not enough people, I think, have been aware at the same time of, of awakening personally to actually make the difference that's being made now. This, this time on earth in humanity's history seems to be the most potent time to make these choices that have such an absolutely huge impact. It, I, I think the only other time I can look back, the Renaissance in, in Europe, People were doing what we're doing now. There, there, was a, there was a completely new thought process. There was a completely new way of understanding the world, whether that was through art or science or social changeability. Something really big happened during that time. I think not until the 1960s, when the entire world was turned upside down with what we call the hippie movement, when people decided they didn't want to do the same thing over and over again. They wanted to make this an enormous change. They wanted to make a difference. And I think we're doing that in a quantumly bigger way at this point in this time in our history. It, it's never been possible to do this. And now we're actually manifesting what we've wanted to occur for a very long time. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, we, we all came in order to be able to really do it this time, because what we're doing this time has never been done before with this level of uh, devotion, with this level of consciousness, <laughs> with this level of truth, right? And all of us here on the call today are all, our hearts, I'm so grateful to, to, to know you, to be with you, with both of you, Janet. Uh, you know, I, I'm so grateful that we have this, collaborative energy that we can um, support each other and support other people as we, you know, ascend and move into our higher vibrational way of living and being. Because we know that that devotion energy, again, is, you know, so many people, if they don't really know what they're devoted to, like you said, Pia, their belief systems, you know, because when I look back now, and I think when I, before I really started going onto this path in earnest, uh, that was in 2008, is when I left the corporate world and I started really uh, following my ascension journey, right? And really stepping into it. And prior to that time, I didn't know what my core values were. And I, I was just a hamster in a hamster wheel chasing, chasing what I was taught to chase, <laughs> you know? And now when I look at it is, is now I know what core values are. And, and, and even in, in the moment, I always, I'm always choosing, well, is this in alignment with my core values? Is this in alignment with freedom? Is this in alignment with where, you know, where, where I wanna be with leading with my heart? So, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy and it, it's, not, it's not easy. We're, we're doing some major, major work. And it, it, you know, it requires all of us on board 24 seven doing this amazing work, this amazing inner work so that we can bring the truth of who we are out into the world. It's, it's a form of pioneering. It's actually, it's, it's something that, that many people would like to begin, but they don't know how. They don't know how to change their lives because they're so invested in what they've been doing and what they've been told to do. So I think, I think sharing as we're doing now is a way of helping everyone understand that 
everybody can be a pioneer. Everybody can make changes, choices, change direction completely from what they thought was the only reality. So I think you're absolutely right. This, this is a time when people can jump <coughs> instead, of, instead of making baby steps. It's time to make huge steps. The last time when we were, we were talking, Colin, you, um, we were going through the collective shadow period on the calendar. Mm -hmm. if, if you all remember, remember that time? Because I know you remember, Colin, because you had an extra double dose that you had done. <laughs> yeah, I'm one, of those, I'm one of those very fortunate people where I go through my own personal <laughs> shadow period at the same time the collective is doing it. So I have to be on my toes absolutely during that time in order for me not to fall into the habitual traps of believing or stepping backwards into what was instead of being in the now. So yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, and are you, are you feeling relieved that it's over and that you're in a, in a new <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have an overwhelming yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So let, let's, if we can, switch gears a bit because, I mean, it's great to talk about devotion and all of that, but those kind of are, you know, these concepts that are up here. How does the everyday person who we come in contact with use this? How do they come to know themselves more completely and fully using this system? Because that's my big thing is that if you don't know who you are, then you don't know where you fit and you can't even connect to devotion of any sort or to ascension of any sort, if you don't even know who you are. So that's always my interest with astrology or human design astrology, Mayan astrology, Pleiadian, is how does this help me tap into who I am and what role I'm here to play on this planet Earth? Well, the two key components of this system to understand are your Earth energy, which we've been talking about, which has either a higher or a lower vibratory expression. And then your cosmic or universal energy, which is what connects you to the cosmos. And those two energies will display what your personality is. Now, how you utilize that personality depends on the choices that you make with your vibration in the earth energy. But you're also always guided by what I call the evolutionary guidance, which is another earth energy that comes into play similar to the Mayan energy of a tricena. It's the first energy that presents on the first of the 13 day period. And that energy is sort of an overlighting period energy for the entire period. So those are the three things. Excuse that me help. for one second, for the 13 days, right? Yes. Yes. For the yeah. 13, yes. That overlighting energy for the 13 days in the Mayan system, it's similar to the, what we call evolutionary guidance in this system, only in this system, we're taking the evolutionary guidance as something that's nudging you to evolve. It's got certain characteristics that are different from your regular personality. I'll use Cullen for an example, if I can. <laughs> Cullen and I both are healing energies. We have very similar personality energies, and yet our evolutionary guidance for each of us is different. Cullen's evolutionary guidance is listening energy. That means that his, at the highest vibration, his evolutionary guidance is pushing him to go into the depths to be able to truly listen to source, listen to each other, listen to other people, listen to the animals, listen to everything before he responds to anything. Now that is an overlighting system to help him understand how to use the energy of healing, which is his personality. And you got that from backing up through the week so whatever day he was born on, you backed up to the first day of that 13-day period. Is that what I understand? Yes. 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 So he was born on the 12th day of that 13-day period. So he has a very strong influence of this listening energy being a part of what guides him, what tells him what to do. It's given him a lifelong practice of really deep meditation that some people have to struggle to be able to even stop their minds to get to that space. But that's the gift of the evolutionary guidance. When you pay attention to what it offers, it can shape your personality in a way that you want to grow and evolve. It, it can not only shape your personality, but going back to your actual question, it can help each of us understand what our true makeup is, what, what our core understanding of who we are and why we're here. 
Um, my makeup helps me see the big picture. I'm, I'm able to look at the umbrella of everything that's going on. But now he's talking about, he's talking about not only the ability to listen to this evolutionary goddess, he's talking about this universal energy, which is a 12, which Com gives combined. Him Combined with that, which yeah. gives him the ability yeah. to see everything at once, to have a whole view perspective. So by, by looking at both of those elements of me, I can see how I can fit in with the world, the universe, and other people. Simply by knowing those two elements about myself, it helps me understand how I'm going to affect other people and other situations. Yeah, so I, I love that. I love Janet. What What is yours? Uh, do you? you oh, we, uh, I'm a two. Remembering. Okay. So, so how is how is that? Um, and I don't remember what that. I, I at one point I did remember what the the first day of the week was, but now I don't remember. That was too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you that with the two energy, you absolutely are clearly in duality. You are here looking at the dualistic opposites of the <laughs> Yes, yes. That's very much an essence of who you are. You're here to express the dualistic perspective instead of it being right and wrong. There's two harmonious aspects that you can see both sides. So that's the universal energy that's guiding you to be who you are. The remembering energy is more about um, looking for how to express your freedom in a balanced and supportive way to others. It is pretty much the essence of what our second book with LARPA is, remembering who we are. You're here to really embody that remembering of all that we can be and to show others by living your own life, teaching by example, what it's like to remember. Hmm. That's beautiful. And that's beautiful. And I think if I remember correctly, remember correctly, that my, that I am, my energy is the breathing energy, mm -hmm. breathing, and uh, that I am a number 12. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, 12 eek. So that was wind in Mayan. So I'm guessing it's, I'm guessing you're right. It is. So Cornelia, that 12 energy you share with Cullen is that b ability to take in the whole world view, to be able to see many things simultaneously at one time. Unlike Janet, who's here to see the opposite perspectives and harmonize them, you're here to see the bigger picture and see how each piece has a significant part to bring it all together for the whole. Both are valuable. There's no hierarchy in this system, which is one thing I absolutely right. love about it. That, that's, one, that's one thing that LARCMA has made perfectly clear to us for the entire time we've been communicating with them is that there is no hierarchy. There's no, there's no better foundational understanding of any of these examples that we're giving. They, they all stand in their own informative place. They're equally important in wisdom. They're equally important in knowledge. They're equally important in everything, every aspect about them. So there's no need to make comparisons between, well, I wish I was like that number, or I wish I was like that energy, because I would know more, or I would, I would be more evolved. It has nothing whatsoever to do with that. It goes back to that fabric you were talking about at the beginning of the show, and how mm -hmm. each red is important for the totality of the fabric. And Cornelia, going back to you, the breathing energy, people who were operate at the higher level of breathing energy, which you clearly are, are masters of change. You have such flexibility inherent in your system that you have the ability to master change and show others how not to be stuck. Show them how to move by the way that you live your life. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. So you both have lovely energy. She's my favorite provocateur. <laughs> in a good, in, in, in all, in a good way, because sometimes, you know, it's that um, the, the things that I provoke sometimes are catalytic. So. Absolutely. Yes. yes. It would be. You know, yes. it's, it's shining the light on, 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 on the stuck part so that you can get unstuck, like you just said, yes. uh, Pia. Pia, do you want to tell us who you are? Since we, we did all the energies, might as well sure. bring the balance I'm in. I'm like Cullen, I'm a healing energy, but my universal energy is one, 
which means I have a double dose of healing energy. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I am. So it's pretty intense being a one energy. When you're a one energy, you you don't have any other guiding force to say be different. You have a guiding force that says be this and be all of it you can be. So I am a one, which means I'm constantly bringing new things to this 12 energy that I live with, surprising <laughs> <laughs> with something different that's going to be coming up. So we could, I'm going to interrupt here for a, a short minute. So that means that Pia is the epitome of Ms. Changeability. She, <laughs> wow. she, can, she can be operating in a certain way, and then all of a sudden, something clicks into place. And she can be involved in something absolutely revolutionarily different than what she was doing the second before. Now, there are other energies that have this changeability, uh, maybe even more than I do. But Cohen's right. I can change because I'm a one energy. Each present moment is actually the present moment. I'm not thinking about the past. I'm not thinking about the future. I'm starting over every moment because I'm a one energy. The healing part, the aspect of healing at the lower vibration can be critical, cutting, poor communicators. Um, those are the lower vibratory aspects that anybody with healing energy can have. The higher aspects of healing energy are the higher vibrations that it recognize we have the power to choose how to make a better path. We have the power to reach out to others in a compassionate way. We have the power to see things at the higher level rather than down at the lower level of blame. We have that power and we're here to help others see how to do that because that's the way that we demonstrate non-judgment, compassion, which are the essence of healing. Yes. Yes, it's, it's beautiful. What we want, what I want, is I want for everybody in the world to use this system. <laughs> Me too. That's, that's what I want. I want for everybody in the world to use this system because it's easy, it's organic, it's simple, and it is uh, evolutionary and it's simple. So let's tell everyone how to get this calendar and how to get your book, Pia. Would you, would you let our audience know? Sure. You can go to either of our websites. The first website is just my name, Pia, P-I-A, Orlean, O-R-L-E-A-N-E, dot -E com. And that has the calendar on it. It has the most recent book that we're talking about on it, the Palladian Earth Energy Astrology. It also has how to get an astrological personal chart done if you want to have your own chart done. Um, that's one website. The other website is LARKMA, L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A.com. And it has the book and the calendar on it. So you can go to those sites and see how to order. There are references of where to order the book in multiple countries around the planet uh, so that you are not stuck with just Amazon, but you have other choices of how to order these books and get them to you quickly. And the calendar as well. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and Janet, why don't you um, also let everybody know about your site and how to get um, how to get in contact with you as well? Sure. Thanks, Cornelia. My website is Living Astrology. It is www.living hyphen the little hyphen astrology.com. And of course, you can find me on Facebook at Living Astrology as well. That's where I broadcast every day. Well except for the last week or two. <laughs> I've been sort of busy. Um, but Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time, I broadcast from the Living Astrology Facebook page, letting everybody know what kind of day energetically we are looking at. Yes, and it's, it's a brilliant broadcast and it's a wonderful show every morning that Janet puts out. And uh, so definitely make sure that you... Uh, tune in and listen. Now, I want to get everybody here in the audience today to like, share, and subscribe our YouTube videos. So where, where you see there on the right-hand side, there's, there's a, a, some buttons that say like, share, and subscribe. This really helps us build the YouTube channel, and we want, we want to be able to um, get this information out there to help as many people.
Yeah, it's all about the reach when we're talking about YouTube. So we need to get to that 1,000 mark. As soon as we get to that 1,000 mark, then this explodes exponentially out there. And that's our goal. Both Cornelia and I have been doing that for our personal channels um, and for Ascension and Astrology. That's our goal. So we can bring this to a wider audience. Yes. And, and Pia, do you, do you all have a YouTube channel as well? We do. Our YouTube channel is Pleiadian Larkma. So Good. it's P-L-E-I-A-D-I-A-N, Larkma, L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A. Yes, we do that. Wonderful. Yeah, see, we have to plug all these things, and we have to get really good <laughs> at selling, you know, what it is that we're offering, because this is, this is very important information that is serving so many people. So mm -hmm. being able to feel good about what it is that we're offering and continuously keep sending people to the links and the offerings. Also, I want to plug my uh, podcast again, Heaven on Earth, uh, every Friday, 12 noon, 12 to 1 Pacific time, Transformation Talk Radio. You can download your favorite podcast app on your iPhone, and you can um, just type in the word Cornelia Stephanie, and there it is. And um, you can also find me on my website at corneliastephanie.com, where I'm always uh, sharing wonderful tools and resources, again, to support a higher vibrational way of living and being. Yay. Yay. So I would like to ask another question, if I may. Um, sure. People may be wondering, what is involved in an astrology reading uh, through you, Pia? What, I mean, I know we're going to look at the day and that type of thing, but what else is a part of a reading? Well, I give them the the guidance of when their shadow cycles are going to be and what the theme for their personal shadow cycle is so that when they start having a difficult or challenging time, they can know how to focus their energy and make it into an opportunity for growth instead of a struggle and a challenge. So the shadow cycle is a big part. I also do a relationship chart. I'll, I'll have them give me five different names of family members or friends that they would like to learn how the relationship works. And I use the Venus star to show this because the Pleiadians have said that Venus is a larger force in our guiding light than we really know. Venus is the planet that is most like Earth. It's the same size. It's this close proximity. A lot, a lot of similarities about the planet Venus. And this uses the actual placement of Venus in this system rather than the natal placement at the point or snapshot of when we were born. It shows a nine and a half month range of the energy that was prevalent in society when we came to the planet, which definitely impacts how we relate to everybody. So I give them a, a big view of how they're relating to people that are important in their lives. And then I, the chart also has a lot of history about Pleiadian Earth Energy Astrology's makeup, what, what the different systems mean. It has the evolutionary guidance. It has the personality combination of both universal and Earth energies. Higher and lower vibrational propensity, so you know how to guide yourself. Social things that have implicated themselves in how you view the world. All of these things are there. And then at the end of the chart, they can ask me whatever questions they want to ask. And I will apply all of that information to what questions they want to have answered. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I do each chart individually. It is not computerized. Each one is done individually. It takes four to five hours to do a person's chart. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, there was a question I had here. What was it now? Uh, oh, about the, the planets. Now, I, I know from Mayan astrology also, they, they used... Uh, Venus was very prominent for them, yeah. but you don't really ever hear of them using any other planets. Is that the same with the Pleiadian Earth energy? Yeah. That it's it Earth awesome. and it's the Sun, or Earth and, and Venus that's primarily yeah. used? It's actually Earth and Venus. The Sun isn't used either. It's the placement oh. of Venus, and the reason for that, Janet, is because Venus makes this lovely loop in the sky, and it goes through five patterns showing five different loops of area where it has potential for change. And each of these loops can be seen sort of like the Vitruvian man. There are two arms and there are two legs to the head. So wherever it is at the time is the head position of the star. And then you look at the other loops that it makes and those are the relationships in your life. Those are the relationships that are guiding you. 
and they also impact us as a culture, as a society, as a planet. For instance, right now, and this is explained in the charts that I do, we're under the Venus guidance of Venus and Scorpio, which is a time of several things. It's a time of the divine feminine coming forward in really a strong way, both in men and women, bringing forth those divine feminine features of being a warrior for love and being a truth seeker and being a nurturer. It's also a time for revealing the depths of like Pluto or Scorpio would be reading the secrets to the top so you can see what needs to be changed. It's a very, very potent time. We switched to Venus in Leo in the middle of August this year. That means Venus will have been in Scorpio for nine and a half months, which coincidentally is the length of time it takes to make a human child. And the synchronicity there is important because what are we doing with our nine and a half months of Venus influence in any place? Can I, 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 got, I have to clarify something. So right now Venus is not in Scorpio. So is this on a bigger, wider cycle that you're talking no. about? This is on the wider, the wider scope. It's the placement, not according to Western astrology in the okay. natal, natal sky, but in the position of where it's looping through the patterns. And gotcha. over I want to I want to chime in here, and that is to say that Venus in Scorpio is in my natal. <laughs> so you can imagine, which is the reason why the divine feminine and my my whole uh, devotion to truth and love having Venus in Scorpio uh, prior to bringing that, that lower vibratory place that my physical body and my consciousness was in into the divine feminine has been very painful, as you can imagine. Having I can imagine. <laughs> you can imagine having that in your natal chart. Not only do I have Venus in Scorpio, but I also have Mars there as well. So very interesting, the two of them together, uh, the couple. Uh, and in your eighth house, right? Or would that be your seventh? Seven? It's my seventh house of relationships, right? So, so they're in the perfect relationship within each other, making you a very androgynous being who is incorporating the divine feminine and the divine masculine simultaneously and using this period of Venus and Scorpio now to boost your own power as Venus is in your natal chart. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it feels really good. I'm, I'm in a really good place right now in, in probably the best place in my ascension time, in my ascension awakening, in my embodiment, in, in knowing the truth of who I am and being able to, like we talked about, is, is to influence our community and our, the, the people that we love and the earth with this level of consciousness because with all of this, we can do so many wonderful things. And, and that's why doing what you're doing with radio shows and podcasts at this time is so important because those influences that you're talking about right now give you the special, and I do mean special, not that, not that special is better than anyone else, but it gives you the special ability to share who you are so deeply with an audience to allow them to understand through how you share, through living your life by example, that is a huge opportunity for you to help in, a, in an amazingly giant scope of, of truth and love out there in the world. So it's no accident that you've chosen to do what you're doing with the public the way you are at this time. And isn't that the way that we lead? All of us, isn't that the way yes. that we lead yeah. by example? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Teaching or at least that's the way we are meant to lead by example. Yeah. Yes. I have a question going back to Venus. So you said there were f five parts of her cycle, right? Because I know she makes the, the pentagram in the sky when you look at yes. it, you know, from a artistic standpoint. Um, so she must, meet, she must move only then through five astrological signs that way scorpio leo must be aquarius and taurus maybe no it, it varies because we also have the larger cycle of 260 years so over a certain period of time she will loop through five signs over and over again and then it starts to shift and change for instance in october of 2022 
Scorpio will move out of the way and Venus will move into Libra instead. So right now we have Scorpio, Lib um, Leo, um, Scorpio, Leo, Gemini, Capricorn, and Aries. That's the five that we're working through right now. Scorpio will back out of the way and say, my time is over on October 22nd of 2022, and Libra will take My place. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's, auspicious. That's auspicious. Completely auspicious. That's amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you better you better write that down in your calendar. I know, circle that day in your calendar, Cornelia. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pia, please continue. <laughs> What's going to happen on October 22nd, 22? That's okay. It's just that that it's going to be it's going to be time for a different shift in energies. And the Venus star is going to move out of this time that we're in right now, which is so full of conflict and revealing the dark and seeing what needs to be changed. And it's going to be moving towards a time of more promise and harmony and hope with signs like Aquarius and Libra and Pisces coming up more than argumentative signs like Aries. You know, it's going to be just a more peaceful time. But the point is, we're here to do the work now while it is combative and while things do need to be revealed and while things do need to be corrected, that's what we're focusing on now because this is the moment of power and change. It, it's a little bit, if, if I used myself as an example, it's a little bit like being pummeled by Pluto. It's an opportunity. The, the challenges are great. The, the, the adversities are great. But, but the opposite of that the other harmonic of Pluto is that it can be the most deeply educational, the, the most deeply growth-filled time. And I think that's what P is talking about, about the change of what we must go through now before that evolves into what will be happening in 2022. It's, it's, a, it's an educational opportunity to go as deeply, deeply, deeply as we can and get as much traction and as much evolving in this time that we can so that when we reach the time when the combativeness and the challenges are not so great, we'll be in a completely different energetic understanding. And Janet, to go back to your question about only five positions being represented, those five positions work synchronistically during the period that Venus is in rotating through that loop. When most of us were born, we were working through Scorpio, Virgo, Cancer, Aries, and Aquarius. Now Scorpio is still here, but about to change. Virgo has changed over to Leo. Cancer has changed over to Gemini, which is all about communication. Aries is still in place. Aquarius has changed over to Capricorn, which is bringing forth, what are you doing about your structures and your governments and your rules? What are you looking at here? So there is a definite profile that these patterns show about what's going on socially on the planet, as well as our own personal growth. Wow. You know, um, as far as Pluto, again, I, Janet being my astrologer for years, you know, she has, um, you know, talked to me about, you know, Pluto, uh, in, in this Pluto cycle that I've been in over all the years, right? And, and uh, how, how long Pluto has been around my best friend. And so literally, you know, with Pluto going down into the underworld, going down into the cave on a continuous basis, continuously uh, shining the light into places that has never, ever, 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 ever seen the light of day before <laughs> and uh, bringing the absolute love into those places where hate was, where there was hate, where there was war, where there was conflict all within myself, what was going on and, and bringing love there. So now I have come to absolutely love and adore Pluto. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, um, because, you know, that has, that has been my, the place where I've really been able to transform my old lower human self that was victimized by the world and, um, you know, bring that depth, the depth of intimacy into, mm -hmm. uh, into my physical experience into my reality and and um yeah the depth of intimacy is the best way to put it i just realized that in this system the moon isn't even being used no nope. no 
Not at all. The closest That's thing kind of surprising to... since it moves so obviously throughout every day of the week or every day of the month. The closest thing in comparison to the moon is the evolutionary guidance because it's where our emotions come up and it's where we have our work to do. The evolutionary guidance <clears> takes <throat> the place of the moon in this system because it's always right there shining its light saying, don't forget about this, you're moving in this direction. So it's also a little bit like the North Node. It's moving you a little bit towards, don't forget, this is what you're evolving into. <laughs> yeah, and if we can remember that every single moment of yes. every single day is, is an opportunity to choose the higher path, choose the higher consciousness. If we can just remember that, you know, don't, this, this is one of the things about ascension is, is bringing that higher love, that higher consciousness into the present moment releasing the old that no longer serves your path of, uh, mm -hmm. forward and letting go of the, letting the old human, the, the wounded human, the, the, um, the victim energy uh, fall away and die away and, and, and letting, letting that beautiful power bring up. Um, I want to say all that. The place that you're talking mm -hmm. about, about Pluto, that's the place where you, when you make Pluto your friend, as you've just so beautifully defined, that's the place where all resistance stops. Mm -hmm. That's where you no longer care that the light is shining into the darkness. And then you all of a sudden say, I surrender. No more resistance to what I want it to be or what it was. I surrender and I'm here now. And that's the moment that Pluto becomes your friend and empowers you to be Cornelia Stephanie or whomever Pluto is working with. Yeah, and you know, I want to do it. I call us the letting go tribe. Literally, mm -hmm. the whole world is we're, we're the letting go tribe and living the surrendered life. You know, yes. in, order to, in order to, you know, embody the new earth, we have to be in a state of uh, living the surrendered life because it's not based on our control of the ego. It is really being in, in our own inner power, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so that, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very painful thing, but when you can, when, when you can, work with the energy and 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 bring your love to it and like you said that state of surrender that is where the freedom true freedom lies yes well said i have just one last question and i know we're getting you know into time here on the calendar when you note i i figured out that some of these colored areas just denote that that's a new 13 day week but what does it mean like this is in purple the first two days of the month here we're in purple that's just to denote the, the difference of the 13 days. If you look back at the month before that, you'll see the beginning of the purple to show gotcha. that. Okay. Yep. Just a continuation of, of that, the month before. that that 13 day cycle from the previous month. I see it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I thought, oh, that those were something special days. <laughs> no. They're all something but special. But they're all special, today. so I know. <laughs> <laughs> they're all special and we're all special and the more we figure that out and work from the specialness that we are the sooner that tapestry you were talking about is going to be woven into a beautiful yeah. fabric of life and if everybody could just bring their their feeling of how special they are that they know that they're special so that they don't need to compare that they yeah. can they can bring that energy there, there's nothing to compare because we're all one we're all connected and there's, you know, like, that's what I love about this conversation today. Many times it was said, there's no need to compare. Nobody's greater than we're all equal. And that's what makes this system so great. It's always such a pleasure to have the two of you. And yes. I'm going to, we're going to bring you on again to Ascension and Astrology show, you know, as we go further into um, this year, and then also bringing you back to heaven on earth. And also looking at other collaborations that we're going to be that we're going to be doing together because we are fast and furious friends and i'm so glad that we uh had the opportunity to connect here again today and let's tell the audience one more time where they can get your contact information pia and colin pia orlean p-i-a-o-r-l-e-a-n-e dot com and or larkma L A A R K M A A dot com. Or the YouTube, Pleiadian Lark, my YouTube. Any of those three places you'll find us. And they all, all three of them have a vast amount of information, archival information, and things that we 
will be doing in the future. So there's, there's a lot of information in all three of those sites. Are you coming to the U.S. anytime soon? Not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. No, I guess we'll just have to go gonna, to Cyprus. That's what we said. We were going to go there. Yeah, we did. We said that. But I was hoping maybe before we did that, they were coming here. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I can still, going, we, we never know. We That's truly true. never know. We do live in the moment, so we will see. <laughs> well, it's, it's certainly wonderful. great having you here. Yeah, it's thank wonderful. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon on Ascension and Astrology. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Did you stop the recording? No, I no. did.